Kevin Jackson Radio Show. What's up, everybody? Merry Christmas. A belated Merry Christmas. Uh, I know many of you are like, uh, well, Kevin, are you doing a live show now for Christmas? Yeah, I'm doing a live show for you. Uh, I was traveling much of the last week, and I'm going to apologize already for some of the best stuff shows. We had problems arranging studios while I was in New York City. The, su- the studio that we arranged for uh, was noisy. It had an air, an, air con- an air conditioning unit that had a fan blade. It was like clink, 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 and you could hear it throughout the broadcast. And while we were prepping the show, I was like, we can't broadcast with this. It sounds like I was in the the hunt for Red October and Jonesy was looking for the Russian sub. <laughs> you know, tink, 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 tink. I was like, I, we can't do it. So that was part of the reason. The other reason is uh, we are setting up guest hosts and it's not as simple as it sounds because everybody thinks they're, you know, bigger and better in radio than you are. So if you Ask them to host your show. They're offended. Oh, you know, who are you? You should be hosting my show. Well, sorry. <laughs> I'll host anybody's show. I don't really care if I have the time. I don't have the time to host mine. But it, it just, it's strange, the dynamic. And um, so a lot's going on. Um, as I said, was up in New York dealing with Fox stuff. But, you know, I, I don't even want to talk about that. First of all, hope you had a Merry Christmas. Hope you had great holidays with family and friends. And just for the record, family is not necessarily blood. Family are people that love and care about you and who want to be with you and want to spend time with you. And that is my definition of family. I'm happy when we have family that we you know, want to have around us. That's our blood relatives. You don't understand what I'm talking about when you think about your ancestry DNA. I got mine done. I'm going to be releasing those uh, uh, results by by on my on the radio Show. I'm going to talk about them. I'm also going to talk about them with respect to uh, my blog, my my writings, my articles, because it was very insightful. And I've already had uh, relatives coming out of the woodwork, sending me pictures. Kevin, you know, who is you? How do we kin over here? And it's been amazing. But here's my point. There are people that I've never known. I had a young lady contact me. She's my first cousin. And we were sitting there. She goes, I didn't even know you existed. I go, same here. And uh, I don't know if I got if I've even said this on the air, but my uncle and I were having a conversation and he said to me, Kevin, there's a total of he goes, I believe there are 12 of you, meaning 12 kids. Now, my brother, I know, and my my half brother, I know, but apparently there are nine others out there. So if they ever get their DNA tested, then we're going to find each other. The young lady who contacted me says, Kevin, it's amazing because, you know, she goes, I'll work it for like, you know, a month. And nothing happens. And then suddenly something happens. And I go, you know what happens? Somebody else takes a DNA test. And suddenly you go, and you find out more about that line. So it's been an amazing discovery. I recommend that you guys do it. Uh, Maybe we'll even get something done where we can uh, carry Ancestry DNA on the show because it's so worth you you guys doing it. But long story short, did it. And uh, here's what, what what I've learned. So I've got a, a play mom and dad, as you guys know, Mary and Frank, and they sent, you know, me some flowers and, you know, Kevin, you know, thinking about you, blah, blah, blah. They, every time I have a project, they say, Hey, let, let, you know, my, my mom calls me and says, Hey, let me and your dad know we'll help you fund it. And I mean, as much as I love my grandparents who raised me and obviously wish I could have been raised by my mom, the fact that this family, we've adopted each other. I think is amazing. And that to me represents family. You know, I've got four young sons. I call them my sons. uh, These adopted kids that came to stay uh, with me for a year uh, while they were uh, teaching French. And uh, I call these guys, my kids, you know, they're sending me uh, information. The two of them are in Seoul, South Korea and things like that. You, you you get to live through them. When I was in Paris, uh, I met up with one of them. He works at a restaurant in Paris. It's just amazing to be able to to reach out to these kids and have them keeping in contact with you. It just it floors me. So I'm so blessed to to have that. And obviously, my my immediate family is a a, a blessing as well. So I hope you were able to experience that. And and it wasn't about gifts and things like this. I mean, yeah, we. 
uh, you're always happy to get kids things like that. Christmas is a big time for me as a kid. I didn't get much. <laughs> I got I got my underwear and my you know my uh, socks and <laughs> but that's okay. That's what my family could afford. But so it's nice to get, get actually get gifts that you don't have to use for school the next semester or whatever. But it it's also good to just uh, you know be be part of the whole Christmas experience and understand what it's about. You know the biblical aspects of it. So hopefully you got a chance to do that. Um, we're going to try to do as many. Uh, you know, like I said, I've got a few issues to work out on radio, but we're moving forward. We got a ton going on. My gosh, uh, Tea Party Community dot org uh, is going to re well, we've launched, but we're going to relaunch. We got mobile coming in and all kinds of stuff. So I'm so excited about what's going to what 2018 is going to bring. And even more exciting is what Donald Trump's doing. And we're going to get into this because it's much needed. We've got you know, clips of people just saying the most loony things over the holidays. Chris Wallace talking about how many seats the Republicans could lose and things like this. We had revelations about illegals that were made on Tucker Carlson's show. Did you hear this? The murder rate among Ill- uh, the crime rate among illegals. They've kept this information from you. They don't want you to know what the situation is with these people because the truth is going to crush any narrative that they have. They know this. So we've got statistics to give you on that. What part of the Obama legacy hasn't been dismantled in a good way that we can't cover? I mean, we could cover Obamacare. Merry Christmas to you. The individual mandate's gone. Pretty soon you're going to start getting plans that can work for you again. So congratulations on that. McCabe, he's now wanting to retire. FBI a deputy director. He's retiring. We had James Baker who stepped down, got demoted. You're winning. You're winning across the board. The EPA. <laughs> I'm going to give you some, some numbers. There's nothing there's going to be conjecture. And also I'm going to cover a phone call that I got from a guy that says he's a Republican. And he heard me say something on outnumbered that was completely taken out of context, but I'm going to respond back to him. Uh, By the way, on that particular guy, he didn't even have the guts. I called him at his house because, you know, get his number. Figured if he wanted to vent, he could he could vent. Called his house over the holidays, tell him Merry Christmas. And he wouldn't even pretend he didn't call me. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. Beth Cook Moranville author of Closer Than Your Breath, A Book of Hope. Hope, that wonderful, wonderful four-letter word that you may feel completely out of. I wrote this book to give you great hope. It's not too late. If fetal position is an all-too-familiar place for you, I understand. If the next 60 seconds are too long, this book is for you. Wherever you are right now, whether you're dealing with divorce or death or sickness, take hope. You are going to make it through this pain. Don't roll your eyes. I've walked this road and I know it. The best is yet to come. Closer Than Your Breath, a book of hope from author and speaker Beth Cook Moranville can be found on Amazon.com or Kindle.com. For more information, visit CloserThanYourBreath.com or on Facebook at Closer Than Your Breath. Kevin J. 
Jackson Radio Show. What's up, fellas? Good to have you back. Kevin Jackson here. KJRadio.com so you can find out more about us. If you do want to call the show, 844-551-8255. Had some favorite tweets over the holidays. One of them was from Tucker Carlson, and it said, Democrats in Congress believe that any measure that makes it harder for immigrants to come here illegally and stay forever at public expense is racist and immoral. Isn't that the truth? A guy by the name of A.F. Branco, a Franco, A. Franco, or A. B. Franco. He's a he's a does comic strips. He's a conservative, and he did one that shows the Democrats handing a present to a little kid who's you know wearing a little Mexican flag T-shirt, and they turn their back on the black kid. And I thought, see, this is a guy that gets it. He knows how to market what's really happening in America and how to make black folks realize. And I'm not talking about the leadership the congressional black circus clowns who have sold out black America. But that type of, of influence could easily permeate down, could filter down to the, the normal black person is going, yeah, man, why do they spend all this time on these illegals when black people got issues? You know, that kind of thing. So I loved it. What was the next quote? Uh, tweet. We had this tweet. Obama exposed for treason. See project Cassandra scandal. And it says Trump passes. I guess that was a, the guy's uh, tax, tax cap thing or whatever. I don't know. Oh, no, no, no. You know what this was? It just dawned on me because who put this up? You didn't even put this up. This was bullet points. Okay. He said Obama was supposed for trees, trees and see Project uh, Cassandra scandal. Trump passed his largest tax reform in three decades. Obamacare mandate repealed, essentially killing the ACA. DOJ opens an investigation on crooked Hillary for Uranium One. That was like a the just a list of the things that had happened in the past week or so. And it may be the guy was like saying, here's all the things that Donald Trump's done during his administration. But regardless, you got to just those things alone. You just, you got to tip your hat to Donald Trump. I mean, what else can you add to this? You just came through. Let me tell you what I saw on Christmas on Christmas, uh, the 23rd, maybe, maybe it was the 24th. It could have been Christmas Eve. I know we went out on the 23rd to go look for some stuff on the 23rd, getting into the mall. It was a zoo. They needed police to direct traffic. It was so much traffic getting into the mall. No lie. Maybe two, three years ago, uh, I had to get a a chain busted. Melissa's chain busted and I was going to get it fixed. And I was, I went to the mall. It, you know, to just say, Hey, can you guys fuse this chain back? A little dainty chain. And, um, I literally go in there. It's a ghost town. It was a ghost town. I was shocked. I'm thinking, boy, it's going to be a lot. This was on Christmas Eve. I figured there'd be guys just filling the parking lots. And I drive by the, where I had to go to the, one of the studios I'd go to, to do Fox hits it was right across from the gallery of mall, which is a you know pretty good, nice. That's not a nice mall, but it's okay. Mall in the St. Louis area. And uh, it was a ghost town. Easy parking. You, it wasn't even like the regular mall where, you know, like they're in regular shopping where you go in and you park, you know, five, six, eight cars down. And the other day, I'm telling you, I'm circling. I'm circling near the parking spot. I'm going, ooh, I hope. Oh, okay, great, great, great. Somebody came out because there was nowhere to park. There were cars circling the parking lot like vultures. I'm not exaggerating this. Let me tell you what you're going to find out. You're going to find out this was the best retail in a decade. Now, I already told you, I told you Good Friday was going to be the best Good Friday. I told you Cyber Monday would be the best Cyber Monday. You're going to hear Internet shopping through the roof and retail shoppers, retail stores, chains did the best they've done. I went to go get a a drill, one of these drills that you could just flip over and, and it's a drill and you flip it back and it's a, because you get tired of flipping the, you know, sc- taking out the different bits, right? So you could just click, click, flip it over and you got a drill and then you got the, the screw. And, um, I went to get one of those, seen it advertised on TV, thought it was a cool thing. Yeah, I know my drill, I could just pop it. I'll put in another one, but I like the idea that when I'm doing a job and I know the two things I'm going to use, I'm going to use that. It was sold out. I went to Lowe's, sold out, went to another Lowe's, sold out. Home Depot, Home Depot had two of them left. And 
I'm looking through the stuff. Retailers are busy. So here's the deal. You're going to find out this was the best retail season in a decade because of Donald Trump. So consumer exuberance up stock market through the roof. I don't know. I've predicted. I know people thought I was crazy when I said this. This was like, I don't know, a week ago. I said, don't be surprised if the stock market goes to twenty five thousand between now and the end of the year. Did I not say this? Don't. Did I? Yes, I did. You know, I've said it more than once. So don't try to play me. Yeah, I said this and I believe it. And I think the minute the 2018 hits in January, you're going to see the stock market start a next run. Now, somebody asked me, they said, Kevin, um, because uh, Obama had a big stock market growth in year one. But and, and so a guy asked me, he sent me this and he said, because it was uh, Obama's financial something, you know, in his administration saying this. And I said, yeah, that's true. Number one, the stock market was at 7,400 when Obama got it. So it was easy to grow it. You know what I'm saying? And while because Obama put a trillion dollars per year over eight years, which built our debt up to $20 trillion, he fake, he falsely built the stock market because it was built on fake money. But Trump's not doing that. Trump's building the stock market on actual productivity. And there's a difference. Quantitative easing is gone. So I'm only making the distinction that there's a re- there are reasons. That if Obama had done a great job with the stock market, I'd tell you, I'd say, yeah, Obama, he did the right things to influence, to, you know, to build the economy. He created real jobs. He didn't use fake job numbers. He brought manufacturing back, which he said couldn't happen. And it pretty much told America, get used to not having manufacturing jobs. Donald Trump's doing it the right way. He's putting in that foundation that makes it happen. So I'm just telling you, keep your money in the market. It's going to continue to rise. And uh, it's going 2018 will be the best mid year election cycle for us. And I'm, we're going to get into this more in the broadcast because Chris uh, Matthews, I'm not Chris Matthews. Chris Wallace had something to say about this, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll get into it. So anyway, here's my third tweet of my favorite tweets. He, uh, guy, black guy didn't get his name, but he says is black lives matter. Don't represent me. It's a lazy thought process to blame whites for everything. Sure. There are a few, a few a-hole cops, but our communities are destroyed by blacks killing each other and fathers not sticking around. We should take responsibility. And it had mad retweets. A guy that probably had only 500 followers, but it had thousands of people that recognized it and retweeted it. And he's exactly right. People want truth. They want to know that, that others that are being impacted by this stuff are recognizing that truth. And that's why this young black man was one of my tweets of the day, because it was so true. And it isn't me saying it it, because people know my views, but telling you that there are people out there like him. And there are many others There's a guy, uh, forget his name, but he's a a black dude. He looks kind of weird, but the guy speaks truth and gets mad props for it. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. Hey, uh, what'd you guys do with that thousand dollars everybody got back from uh, Donald Trump's tax plan, huh? Talking to our producers. You didn't get a thousand dollars back. Okay. <laughs> Neither did I, by the way. But a lot of people did. And let me tell you something. Radio listening audience listening to the Kevin Jackson show, leftists hate when the free market provides. They hate that the free market gave people back its money because leftists believe the only people who can do that are government. Hillary Clinton made the comment. Uh, as silly as it was, if, if can you imagine if Donald Trump had said, uh, corporations, uh, they don't create jobs. And she was reading it because she didn't even realize how stupid that sounds. So who creates jobs? Somebody tell me. Government regulations do. Really? So government regulates that you build a road or a bridge and you say that job is created. Who was prepared to build that road or bridge? 
Hmm? Did the government go out and, and give the money to somebody and say, hey, uh, why don't you go, you know, work on c- concrete and asphalt and gravel and figure out the best things to do for the road? And while you're building that road, you know, those guardrails and those cement things and all that. Yeah, government did none of that. Somebody that was in the cement business or the aggregate gravel business or whatever was already prepared to deliver what government mandated. But they had they're the ones who built the jobs. Oh, well, Kevin, government made them add to it. Really? So where did government get the money? Just curious. Did government have it? Did they print it? Where'd they get it? Because without the faith and the backing of the U.S. citizen willing to go out and work, government money is worthless. I could barter for my life. I could say to the person that holds my mortgage, hey, listen, uh, I'm a doctor. I'll take care of your family. If you'll let me have this half million dollar house, I'll take care of your medical concerns uh, as a general practitioner for five of your family members for the next 10 years or whatever. I could negotiate that. I could negotiate my food. I could grow my food. In other words, we don't need money to in order for us to get by. People trade stuff all the time. I'll make a product, trade you a product. That's the way it used to work. So money is just a way for government to say, look, if we have one single currency, everybody can understand what it's worth, the value of it, et cetera. Okay, great. But then what do they do? They devalue it. Barack Obama printing eight trillion plus dollars during his presidency. Fake money. Propped up the stock market. It saved the economy. How do we know that? Black hole right now, trillions of dollars unaccounted for. In this economy, fake money out there, trillions unaccounted for Department of Defense, HUD found half a trillion missing. The deal, uh, the the DOD, they're going uh, military budget. They're going. We think it could be upwards of two trillion dollars disappeared. Many others, bigger numbers. Black holes. Pardon the pun, (laughs) but I do know where it's gone. It's gone to government waste and fraud. And there are people all around the world, these top one percenters that they keep talking about, the guys that that w- w- while they put themselves in a line of fire, jokingly say, I don't care. Go after the top one percent. Our money is so well protected. You can do whatever you want. We're still going to be the top one percent. The only way we change what they get is through somebody like Donald Trump. But for the rest of us, we're benefiting. We're getting a heck of a deal. The $1,000 back from AT&T and a couple of other companies, $15 minimum wage, and you know what the left is doing? They're complaining. We're the ones that suggested it. And $1,000 is nothing. When Barack Obama told people they would get $40 per paycheck back, people were like, wow, it may not only be $40, but it's $40, you know, you ain't had. They were rationalizing it. Companies go, we're going to give away a billion dollars because we got our tax breaks, AT&T and others. And the left goes, well, what's the big deal? What's the big deal is AT&T and those other companies, first, third bank or whatever they are, they're exuberant about this economy. Raises and bonuses will start to occur. Hiring will happen. And the minute that money comes back from offshore, more things are going to start happening. This economy is going, it's already booming. You want a job, you're going to be getting jobs. Here's what I will tell you. I suggest go go put your your, your resume in at different places. You're going to find out people are ready to go. Youngsters will be able to get decent jobs. Jobs where they can apprentice and learn. It's amazing. The left likes your money best when it's extorted. See, only government can give out extorted money legally. And the left goes, look at what government's done. Yeah, well, look at what government's done. Look at what Barack Obama did. In the final year of his presidency, we lost 17,000 manufacturing jobs. And Barack Obama said, those jobs are never coming back. In the first year of Donald Trump's presidency, we added 171,000 new manufacturing jobs. Now, for those of you doing the math, that's a net gain of 100 and 88,000 manufacturing jobs. 
We went from being losers of manufacturing jobs to winners of manufacturing jobs. Now, for those of the le- on the left who can't follow along, because I'm going to go a little slower for you, manufacturing jobs are better jobs. They're good quality middle class jobs. And what it also means is we can start to innovate. I said that slow. I want you to get that's a big word. Three syllables for you. Innovate. So we're going to start seeing a, a American renaissance in the way manufacturing occurs. So suddenly we don't rely as much on China. Now, what did uh, Nancy Pelosi, by the way, starring in the new movie Armageddon, the remake, (laughs) Nancy Pelosi predicted Armageddon. They've predicted Armageddon from what? When Donald Trump got elected, the economy was going to tank. Now, you would think that's all I'd have to say. To a typical leftist, I'd say to them, hey, listen, you want to argue about Trump? Look, I don't have no dog in the fight. Do you like him? Do you not like him? But we were told it was Armageddon, doom and gloom. And what happened? Donald Trump got elected. The stock market is through the roof. 5,000 plus points higher than when Barack Obama was elected. I mean, than when Barack Obama left office. Economy booming. I just gave you the one year statistics on manufacturing jobs. Jobs that Barack Obama said would never come back to America. Now, I ask you, are we in doom and gloom? I don't know if this is an actual number yet. For if it's, I haven't verified this, but I know at least a million jobs have been created under Trump. But I heard it's 1.7 million. Year one. Barack Obama lost $4 million, $4 million jobs his first year in office. That is a net gain. Doing the math for leftists because they're stupid. 5.7 million jobs net gain based on first year performance. So is that the doom and gloom you're talking about? I'm just curious. Somebody help me here. Maybe there's a new definition of doom and gloom. You know, like the new definition of a good president is a president who cannot create jobs, who fudges the numbers, who only talks about how bad his predecessor was, who takes no fault for anything that goes wrong, whose policies practically crippled the economy. Maybe that's the the definition of good and the guy who can create 1.7 1.7 million jobs this first year, bring 171,000 manufacturing jobs back to the United States, has an unemployment rate that's lower than it's been in decades, consumer confidence higher than it's been in decades, spending through the roof because you people believe you actually have a future now. Maybe that's the definition, the new definition of gloom and doom, in which case I'd like some more doom and gloom, please, with my salad. Unbelievable. Doom and gloom. Whatever Donald Trump does, it can't be right. It's wrong. If Barack Obama had this record that we're talking about right now, let me tell you something, folks. As much as I would hate to admit it, I would say, bring on some more Barack Obama. Were you saying that after year one for Barack Obama? Okay, I'll play along. Year two? Year four? Uh, Let's just go ahead and do it. Year eight. Did you want more of the black president? <laughs> Because I would really like to see a show of hands of somebody that can tell me that the Democrats, you wanted more of the guy who lost a thousand seats for you. You wanted more of that. Now, you have a comparison now. I understand if you go, well, I thought I did. You know, Kevin, I mean, I was like, you know, he seemed pretty good and everything. I mean, he does speak very well. You got to admit, he still spoke well when he left. Okay. If, if that makes you feel good, great. But now you got a year to compare to somebody else. Are you mad? Because <laughs> leftists sure seem mad, given that, that you, what, what do you, I mean, I don't know why you'd be mad. Donald Trump came in, he made promises, he's done everything. He's, I, I Granted, it goes against lefty ideology, but it's working. If it had gone against righty ideology with Barack Obama, I would just have to concede and say, guys, you got us. He was a he was a rock star, but he wasn't. And Trump is. What is your problem with this leftist? I'm just curious. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. 
Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177 or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. End to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson. We got tons to talk about. Tons. We do. And here's the thing. Um, I'm going to get to a lot of stuff that points the finger at the FBI. I'm going to give you some information that's going to make you smile through the rest of the holiday season. It's going to make you unbelievably overjoyed. And what's going to be happening and coming in the new year? Because you know what? We're not going to be seeing much of each other between now and the new year. So I want you to feel good about who you are and what's going to happen in 2018. You're going to hear all kinds of stuff from people. They're going to tell you how bad it is. They're going to try to convince you that Donald Trump's going down, man. He's going down. And you're going to go, whatever. This isn't going to happen. They're going to tell you doom and gloom. It's, that's all there is. The left has one thing to sell. And you know what's cool about this? Yeah, I will make you feel good. Go ahead. You can start smiling now. You don't buy it anymore. They tell you, it's going to hurt the women and the children and black people and, 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 and illegals. And, and you know those dogs you see on the commercials for the SPCA? Them too. And you're going to go, okay, fine. <laughs> you don't even care. Good for you. What did I tell you? We had a lesson a while back. And I told you, you have to learn not to care. So I'll give you an example. In my own life, I had an issue with my oldest son. You know, divorced. And my son believes his mother walks on water. I've never said a negative thing about her to him. Never. He called me one time, told me, me, my, 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 mom. And I said, hold it, hold it, hold it. I go, me and your mom might have had problems, but I'm not going to turn. You You think I'm going to jump on your side? We talked through it, you know, thought everything was cool because he was like, wow, my dad didn't take the bait. No, I told him, you know what? You're going to respect your mom. She may even be wrong this time for all I know, but you guys need to talk it through. Blah, blah, blah. That was the way I handled it. And we still have issues because he's now forgotten that lesson. And he's mad. We were talking the other day. He's mad. You know, oh, you did this to us. You did that to that. Blah, blah, blah. He actually said, get this. He says, you didn't pay your child support. And I said, what? Complete lie. I said, let me tell you something. The way your mother felt about me, if I didn't pay my child support, I'd be in jail. And I said, for, just for the record, I have every record of every payment I've ever made for you guys. Child support. Have it right here. I said, have the court order that my child support is over. So unless you got something else to tell me, you better go check and see who's lying. But see, that's what happens. People get a little bit of information and they it's wrong, but they don't. They, he believes that it's his mom that, you know, she's right no matter what she says. And, and you know what? Chalk it up to experience. Hasn't been in enough relationships, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to I'm not going to be mad at that. But what I will say is when you grow up, here's what you do learn. You learn there are two sides to every story, as they say. And then there's the truth. Now, he's got one side. He doesn't even have the second side so he can evaluate it and go, well, here's the truth. Now, a little bit of dirty laundry for me. Just to let you know, folks, none of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. But what I'm trying to make the point of is this. Dealing with my son in this issue is the way you deal with leftists. They have one side of the story. They don't want the second side of the story. The left, that that one side is comfortable. Because, as is the case with my son, if he finds out reality, it's going to force him to think differently about his mother. Now, I'm not going to do that for him. Other than to say, 
Here's a factoid you might want to look at, look up, because it is a matter of public record that I paid 100% of my child support. And if you think back a little bit further, I did much more, much better than that. Long story, but I did. Completely did. So that's the problem. Leftism and deranged thinking in general doesn't want to look at another situation. It doesn't want to look at the possibilities. The, the biggest growth that ever occurred for me was when I stopped believing that just what I say is the way the world thinks. I've told you guys this story. I thought everybody was a warrior. I thought everybody was prepared to go to battle. They're not. So you have to understand why not? Because if you don't, you think you're, you're you think you're hand out here with a bunch of warriors and you're not. You're with a bunch of people who are ready to leave you on a moment's notice. That's what the Republicans are. Most of the Republicans are they are so sanctimonious. They're waiting for you for the tide to turn against you so they can go. Oh, see, I told you about that kid. It reminds me of the, the movie Wall Street where Charlie Sheen is the guy tells him, you better get off your butt. You're not doing very good. Then Charlie Sheen bags the elephant. No Gordon Gecko, and the guy comes back and says, "I told you that. I, I knew you were going to be a great, you know, great catch one day." I forget the what he played, who Charlie Sheen played, and so then he goes down, and the guy goes, "Oh, I knew, I knew there was something about you." Well, which is it? Which is it? So that's the left. It's doom and gloom. They're going to get after you. They're going to, they're going to uh, be as fickle. And as whimsical as you can possibly imagine, and it doesn't matter what comes up, they're going to try to convince you the sky's falling and it's time for you to switch. So net neutrality, I'll use that as an example. They said it was going to kill the Internet. And the very next day, your Internet was the same. But the Fed taking complete control of the Internet was supposed to be a good thing, right? Because it works out so well in everything else, like healthcare, like the post office, you know, tell me where it works out great. No offense against our military, but if we had a privatized version of the military, it would be five times more efficient and it would be at 10 times uh, less cost. That's the truth. I, I Look, I, I sold parts of the military for decades. Well, for a better part of a decade. And I will tell you, the stuff that we had to jump through hoops because they said it had to be this or mill spec and all these different things was a waste of money. It was a, it was a fraud. It was for testing agencies to make money and things like this. It was crazy, but that was the way it was. That's how it worked. That was how they buried money. So the, the fed does nothing well. They don't do housing and urban development. They don't do schools. You like fed schools. Who do you think are the best students? One's going to public universities or one's going to private universities. One's, uh, you, uh, I, I jokingly say all the time, who's going to win the next spelling bee? It's going to be a public school student or it's going to be a homeschooler. But the Fed will have you believe if you homeschool, you're stupid. Those kids are stupid. There are a bunch of them who are. But there are a bunch of them who are unbelievably bright. I would compare homeschoolers to the government sanctioned schools any day of the week. Any day of the week. But the government will beat you down. Oh, homeschooling. Ted Cruz just did a whole thing on. They wanted to take money uh, from homeschoolers. They, they didn't want to let homeschoolers have the college education plans, the 529 plans. Or you can save for college education. Seriously. Look at the record of the public school system and tell me you want a school system where 30% of the kids drop out, 50% of minorities drop out, and you say, oh, that's the system we want to have set up 529 plans. It's unbelievable. Anyway, back to net neutrality. So they give it a cutie, cutesy name, net neutrality, because, you know, we all like neutral. If we're like Switzerland, I'm not for anybody. I stand for nothing. I'm just neutral. So the net's neutral. If it's so neutral, why are they all talking about, well, when are we going to figure out how to tax the net? we got to figure out how to get some more revenue. How do we plan the revenue to go here, 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 and here? It's all about revenue, 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 net neutrality. Cute little name. Mm-hmm. And what's funny, Facebook, who regulates conservatives like Nazis, claims to want uh, net neutrality. <laughs> I mean, th- these guys were benefiting from it. Now it's open. 
you know, it's, it's competitively open again. It's the way the internet started. And, and oh my gosh, my gosh, man, what's going to happen with nothing when they do this? Nothing, nothing happened. What's going to happen when Donald Trump's elected? He's going to be doom and gloom. Oh, no doom and gloom. Oh, net neutrality happened. Oh, no doom and gloom. Oh, the stock market didn't crash. The economy didn't go down. Unemployment didn't, you know, go up. Whatever. No, because that's what the left wants you to believe. They're the biggest prostitutes of doom and gloom that you'll ever meet. Now, I bring this up just because it, to tell you, it's another sky is falling moment. And, and look, as we go through the broadcast, as I said earlier, we got a ton to talk about. We're going to talk about illegals. We're going to talk about Obama era scandals. We're going to talk about McCabe's testimony, the fugitive slave bill and other things that have come up over. And, and most of it has to do with this this crazy thing that the left loves to do, which is to get people all charged up over nothing. And I want to ask you, are you done with it? When you hear doom and gloom, what are your thoughts? So if you start to li- to not listen as much, ask yourself what the average person is starting to do. I'm not talking about a big amount of people, just a few. He won't stop until he's the top rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. We've got breaking news to get you. The FBI saying it has arrested a man in San Francisco for allegedly planning to carry out an ISIS-inspired terror attack on Christmas Day. The suspect, Everett Aaron Jameson, intended on targeting Pier 39, crowded tourist spot out in San Fran. The suspect communicated his plans to an undercover agent, David, posing as an ISIS operative. Glad that is foiled. Welcome, everybody. Kevin Jackson. Here's the Kevin Jackson Show. Terror plot foiled over Christmas. Guy was going to shoot up Pier 39. Busy place. Ex-Marine. Anti-Trumper. Think about that. Military man. How, what's our military become under Barack Obama when you get out of the Marines, become a jihadist? White boy. Yeah, this ain't like Malik Jaquan. <laughs> this is a dude. This is Ben Johnson, Ben Jolson, you know, whatever. He, he's now wants to become a terror threat and takes on some crazy Muslim sounding name and decides he's going to go shoot up people at Pier 39. And luckily, we had the right people in charge. Welcome to the Kevin Jackson Show, KJRadio.com. And Obama and his people would, they'd brag about it. It was a homegrown terrorist, an American day. He wasn't a guy from overseas. We didn't bring him in on the refugee resettlement program. No, we did far worse. We made a Marine. In the era of Obama, we converted a Marine from an American-loving, you know, feed that man lead uh, metal and he'll spit out bullets kind of guy to protect this country to somebody who's willing to go shoot at citizens. And they would brag about it. You leftists, y'all are something else. Woo! You want to call the show, 844-551-8455. Hey, you think that was the only isolated terror attack? We've had two terror attacks, you know, one that thwart, was thwarted in New York, another one that occurred within the last 90 days. This one gets thwarted in San Francisco. And then we have a real live jihadi. Well, he's not live anymore. That And this attack happened in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. You still feeling safe. You got New Year's coming up. Let me ask you this. Do you believe that there are Obama era refugees in America and converted Americans turned Islamic jihadis in this country planning murder and mayhem of American citizens on New Year's Day? Do you think that's the case? Because you know, it's you know, it's true. You know, there are people out there doing this. The guy who ran over those folks in New York. In that Home Depot truck, you know what that fool was? He was saying, I plotted this for the better part of a year. How many people do you think have been plotting something during Christmas or during the holidays for, for this moment that, that we are in right now? 
You think anybody's plotting that in the United States? Okay, here's a better question. Do you think people were plotting that 30 years ago, 40 years ago? You think anybody was plotting against us? And if so, how many? Give me an, give me an answer, folks. Do you think that less than two people are plotting against us for New Year's or maybe for Christmas? Do you think less than five? Do you think less than 10? Do you think less than 100? Let me tell you something. I wouldn't be surprised if many of you go, yeah, probably less than 100. So let's just use that number. If you... A hundred people plotting something against us for religious beliefs right now. It's unbelievable. Don't feel safe. You can't feel safe yet. Donald Trump's getting there. Hey, have you heard the media talking about ISIS being run out of Iraq? They put a Christmas tree up in Iraq. That's how safe the Iraqis felt. Did you hear that story? Did you see it anywhere in mainstream news? A Christmas tree going up in Iraq. Just telling you folks, but let's go back to uh, the Obama legacy and the fact that America now must deal with a new world full of Muslim terrorists, some of whom are in our midst. Because the left, they downplay this. They clamor for more voters and mayhem. But the stories abound, folks. Sanctuary city of San Francisco. I mean, if you're a terrorist or a fugitive from Mexico, you couldn't ask for a better place to to, to get, get sanctuary. Have you been there? The place is gorgeous. It costs a lot of money to live. But you know what? If you're just going to knock white folks in the head and take their money, who cares where you live? Take their houses. They don't seem to care. Unbelievable. The radicalized American wanted to kill people. And so now we get this report about Harrisburg, 4 p.m., series of shots were fired at the Capitol Police car, the corners of 3rd and State Streets in Harrisburg. Two other shootings that happened earlier, one at 5th and Market, the other at 7th and Mulberry. This is Little Town America. You hearing the name of these streets? Then police shot and killed 51-year-old Ahmed Amin Amin El Mofti, later identifying him as the man behind all three of the shootings. Dauphine County District Attorney Ed Morisco said the police were deliberately targeted. The fatal shooting of El Mofti uh, happened when he approached officers with two rifles and a shotgun firing at them. Now, you can bet there are people out there go, why did why did God have to go kill that man, man? Drew, that man wasn't doing nothing, man. He was just, he was just trying to get him, you know, trying to go to college. <laughs> the Obama legacy. You, how do, does it get any better than that? A Muslim trying to kill cops. But you know what's cool about this? They didn't withhold his name. They didn't we withhold his. We knew his. <laughs> we knew his religion the minute we heard his name, Ahmed Amin Amin El Mafti. Oh, he's Buddhist. <laughs> Wanted to kill cops. Fired several shops. Shops. Shots. <laughs> not shops, at police cars and just, for I mean, for really no reason. They're not provoking him. They weren't, hey, you crazy Muslim, you jihadist, you, you baby killer, you ISIS lover. I mean, nothing. Cops are just sitting around doing their jobs. They were, was he being accosted by American citizens? Was the Tea Party following him and yelling expletives at him or anything? No. Did they, look, this is a guy that's got multiple illegal guns, He's he's got violations of the law that are longer than a Polish woman's last name. And we just hear, hey, he was shooting at cops and he's dead now. OK, let's move along. There's a lot the left wants you to overlook in this story. Muslim cop killer, illegal guns, probably over here from refugee resettlement or one of these chain migration guys. We'll find out more. Anyway, we got a ton to talk about, folks. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. 
Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177 or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. Beth Cook Moranville author of Closer Than Your Breath, A Book of Hope. Hope, that wonderful, wonderful four-letter word that you may feel completely out of. I wrote this book to give you great hope. It's not too late. If fetal position is an all-too-familiar place for you, I understand. If the next 60 seconds are too long, this book is for you. Wherever you are right now, whether you're dealing with divorce or death or sickness, take hope. You are going to make it through this pain. Don't roll your eyes. I've walked this road and I know it. The best is yet to come. Closer Than Your Breath, a book of hope from author and speaker Beth Cook Moranville can be found on Amazon.com or Kindle.com. For more information, visit CloserThanYourBreath.com or on Facebook at Closer Than Your Breath. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. All right, everybody, welcome back. Kevin Jackson here. You know what we need to do? It's always that time to reflect <laughs> this time of year. And and for the record, I hope you guys go into your New Year's resolutions and whatever else you've got going on. I hope you go into those things and you, you know, whatever you, your, your heart desires, I hope you really focus on it and make it happen this year for yourselves because this is the time to do it. This is the time where money will be freed up, investment, you're going to have choices in your careers, you're going to indulge what you've been wanting to do. And go fight the good fight. And by the way, do it with a smile on your face because you are the reason that this country is back on track. Don't listen to polls. Don't listen to left naysayers, anti-Trumpers, whatever. They're all full of it. If they want to convince you that the best thing that happened to this country did not happen on 11 uh, of 8 of 2016, November the 8th, (laughs) I'll get it out one way or the other. (laughs) Or they got to do numbers or whatever. But when Donald Trump got elected, Katie barred the door. Man, who let the dogs out? But let's look at Obama. Behold the pale horse. And the man who sat upon him was Barack Obama. After hiding his destruction of America's economy in trillions of dollars of quantitative easing, a.k.a. debt, Obama pretended to leave America in good hands. And I'm going to always come back to this clip of Barack Obama saying, what's he going to do? Wait for magic wand when in terms of saving carrier. And when he talked about these jobs are gone in the same speech, he told us there are some jobs in America. They are not coming back. Now, earlier in the broadcast, I gave you some numbers. In the last year of Barack Obama's presidency, we lost 17,000 manufacturing jobs. In the first year of Donald Trump's presidency, we've gained 117,000 manufacturing jobs. Now that's an amazing number. I want you to think about that. The free market at work, 171, I'm sorry, I said 117,000, I meant 171,000 manufacturing jobs have come back to this country within one year. And Barack Obama, in an eight-year bragging of what, what he could do for this economy, after eight years of that, he, in his final year, he lost 17,000 jobs. So you can imagine what the trajectory was. What jobs was he earning throughout that period? Was he gaining? Outside of the fact that people quit looking, Barack Obama couldn't find a manufacturing job if you took him to the plant and dropped him in a cauldron. He couldn't do it. If you took him in a plant and put him next to a, a 
PLC, a programmable logic controller that would run the, you know, the facility, he couldn't do, he'd be like, where, where, where are we at here? What, what, what's this? We in a bakery? <laughs> he, would, he wouldn't know what to do. God was uncomfortable because he's never had, look, I've walked through a lot of factories in my life as a management consultant, a lot of them. And when I remember the first time I went, you know, I worked in one as an engineer. And I remember the first time I went in, I was like, wow, this is really, you know, this is how things work. You got all these conveyor belts and you got all this programmable stuff. And you got all these machines and, you know, and ro- robots making. It was like, wow. It was like, whoa. And it was eye opening. And then after doing it for years, I'd go into a plant and it was like, boom, I know. Exa- OK, you're going to situate your incoming here. You're receiving here. Your working process is going to be here. You're going to have little inventory, you know, setups for this or that. I started looking at, you know, how often are you having to change, you know, your solder uh, you know, add solder to the mix or do this or, you know, surface mount material or blah, blah, blah. I mean, you start, you get to where you have an eye and you can just look around that factory and go, okay, it's pretty good flow, but wouldn't this be better if you do this, that, or the other? You gain an eye for it. Barack Obama, psh, the dude, if, if he walked through 20 plants the whole time he was president, I'd be shocked. He might've gone and done a, uh, like a, a photo op of Caterpillar. But really going and understanding what these guys are doing and why they placed the machinery there, who looked at the flow, it wouldn't have a clue. They show them st- statistical you know, processes and things like that because they have the charts. So put the charts up. How many times days between accidents and things like that for OSHA and incentive programs for those types of things. Rock over. He just, man, give me the photo op and I'm like, get me to the golf course. Anyway, Obama hoped Trump would fail. Then he could gloat about how he left things. And so imagine you're planning on spiking the football on growing the debt by $10 trillion and overseeing the worst economy since the depression. And the only thing you can do now is hope that Donald Trump fails. I mean, and think about his policies. This is a man who penalized people who couldn't afford health care. I want you to think about that. He put a penalty on you. You, you say, look, I can't afford this. I can't pay this much money to be on health care. There's not a plan I can afford. Well, then you're going to pay a penalty. Okay, so why don't you just uh, rub a little salt in the wound? He crushed businesses with the very same piece of crap legislation. He stifled growth and prosperity in this economy. And he has the nerve to tell Donald Trump in America, we should thank him. He gave America 51 genders. <laughs> you, you tell me what they are, because I don't know. And then leftists who support this fool, they create laws to force you to call somebody by the right gender, or you could go to jail. Don't think I'm joking about this. In California, if you don't use the right gender pronoun for somebody, there's a statute now because of Governor Moonbeam Brown that'll put you in jail for nonsense like that. Or how about this? You don't want to bake a cake for a gay couple. So you're a homophobe and you should lose your business. That's what we are. That, that baker didn't tell those homosexuals, hey, you can't eat. I won't sell you anything. He just said, I'm not baking you a wedding cake. They said, we want a birthday cake. He'd have baked it. But do you think that they're asking that question? Of course not. Because they want his religious conviction to be turned over by the government. And what's that going to do? Do you think his religious conviction changes because you forced him to lose his business? The answer is no. What do you think? Go, oh, you're, you're going to change and you, you lose your business. Okay, great. I still feel the same. So what? Now I don't have a business. I don't employ people. What good does that do to the economy? You're not changing my mind on this. Unbelievable. If you call a snowflake a sofa and they want to be called a couch, you got to go to jail. Obama gave us terms like transracial, yet another letter to add to the oppressed LGBTQ. He gave us sanctuary cities, another BS term that doesn't even exist under our laws. And then Obama dumps terms like uh, from the lexicon, like radical Islam, because that doesn't exist, right? 
He gave us renewed Clintons. And in 2014, that mafia collected $177 million. They spent $86 million doing it, kept $86 million for their efforts, and donated $5 million. And Obama oversaw the most criminal government in the history of this country. And it would take a miracle to straighten out the nuclear bomb that this man and the leftists who supported him dropped on America. And you made it happen. Go Trump. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Watch the news. Uh, as you know, we had the largest tax cuts in our history just approved. And I was going to wait for a formal signing sometime in early January. But then I watched the news this morning and they were all saying, will he keep his promise? Will he sign it by Christmas? You will one. But will he sign it by Christmas? And I called downstairs. I said, get it ready. We have to sign it now. We we're going to wait till January 7th or 8th and do a big formal ceremony. But every one of the networks was saying, will he keep his promise? Will he sign it for Christmas, before Christmas? And so I immediately called. I said, let's get it ready. Uh, as you know, $3.2 trillion in tax cuts for American families, including the doubling of the standard deduction and the doubling of the child tax credit. The typical family of four earning $75,000, we see an income tax cut of more than $2,000, many much higher than that, slashing their tax bill in half. And they're going to start to see that because we're signing today. They're going to start to see that in February. Welcome back, everybody. Donald Trump is confident about what this tax plan is going to do for the economy and for people who are looking for this relief. I want you to think about somebody who's a hundred dollars, you know, getting a hundred dollars behind every month. And it's just been ganging up and they're trying to cut and they're, they've been doing what they can, but Obama's economy just has them hamstrung. They can't find jobs, a part-time job or whatever. They're just struggling. And suddenly they got 200 more dollars a month in their pockets. The next check they get is going to be enough to cover all the bills and They're going to have a little bit of wiggle room. And I want you to think about that voter in 2018. Now, here's what I want you to also think about, because they did a I was I was actually very surprised by this. This is a CBS uh, that did this. They took people's taxes in three different areas, California, North Carolina, somewhere else. And they took them to an accountant in D.C. And they said, Based on the Trump tax plan, do these people's accounting for them. And they started doing their accounting and we got the clip. It's a little long, but I promise you it's worth it. And I want you to think about this as people start assimilating. Keep in mind, this wasn't a Fox News, you know, let's go out and find people to do it. They they picked three random folks. CBS did it, gave the taxes to an accountant. And the results went over CBS. This is not a Fox audience. This isn't a strongly conservative audience. But this is what this audience got to see. Now, you're only going to get to hear the audio, but you'll get what I'm talking about. Most get a tax cut next year under the plan Congress passed this week. But figuring out exactly how much your family will save is tricky. Republicans say a typical family of four earning $73,000 a year will see taxes drop by more than $2,000. We wanted to see how folks will actually fare. So we asked households from three different parts of the country to send us their tax returns. And then we had an accountant calculate how things will change for each of them. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. As Republicans sent the tax bill to the White House, Marcy George wondered if it would make a difference in her house. It didn't seem as they were going along that it would really affect someone like me. A single mother who rents a home in Cary, North Carolina, her income last year as an administrative assistant was a little under $40,000. Financially, I struggle. I live paycheck to paycheck. I make things work. I readjust and rearrange, but I, um, we do get by. So will getting by get any easier? 
we brought her 2016 tax return to Jeffrey Levine, a certified public accountant at Blueprint Wealth Alliance on New York's Long Island. If she were your client, what would you tell her? I got good news for you, Marcy. You're getting more money back next year. He says she'll benefit from a doubling of the child tax credit. And based on her returns last year, he estimates a savings of about $1,300 in taxes. That would be more that I would be seeing um, in each paycheck. So that would be a good thing. Amber and Jason Edwards were also hoping for some good news. You know, I hope it alleviates, you know, pressure on the middle class. Whether it does or not, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. They're married homeowners with no kids in Providence, Rhode Island. As college educators, they took in more than $150,000 last year as they worked to pay down their student loans. Financially, we're, you know, we're, we're doing okay. We're certainly, you know, uh, not at the poverty level or anything of that nature. Jason, who blogs about their finances, wanted to know how things would change. I actually think they would pay tax on about $12,000 more of income, but because of the lower rates, they actually end up saving a little bit of money. The Vine says the couple will switch to the newly increased standard deduction, which means a simpler return with no itemized deductions. He thinks they'd owe about $650 less than before. Honestly, I'm a little surprised because, well, what you had said Initially, you thought we were going to have a higher tax bill. Right. They're not the only ones. Melissa and Lane Lev also expressed concern about next year's taxes. I'm thinking they're going to be higher. Um, and by how much, I don't know if I could answer that. I'm just thinking they're going to be higher. Married with three children, they own a home in Fresno, California. They opened a cycle studio last year, and Melissa is a pharmaceutical sales rep. Their combined income in 2016 was around $300,000. We were doing well enough to take a risk and open up a small business in our town. It's definitely hard work and uh, definitely a lot of stress when, when we have uh, you know, so much of our worth on the line, so to speak. Lane and Melissa are from California, very high income tax state. So there are a lot of people worried oh my goodness, this is, this is really going to hurt me. They thought it was going to be a big bill. I'm not surprised. It actually is really going to help them, though. Levine says their itemized deductions, including breaks for state and local taxes, will be much lower. But they'll no longer be hit with the alternative minimum tax and will now qualify for child tax credits when they didn't before. Overall, he estimates they'll be responsible for nearly $13,000 less in taxes. Well, that's good. I like the sound of that. <laughs> Can I get the accountant's number after this? <laughs> so wait a minute. So all three families that we brought to you, they're all going to see a decrease in their tax. Every single one of those families will have more money in their pocket next year. Uh-oh. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. It's the Kevin Jackson Show. 844-551-8255. CBS. Telling people. Telling the rest of the world. The leftists. You know what? The sky is not falling. This Trump tax cut is going to help you. Now, I don't know how many people are going to compare one versus the other, but people are used. They know what they normally get back. Most of Americans are like, "Ooh, waiting on that tax check, boy, I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. And let me tell you, the way they did it, doubling the standard deduction, all those other things. Those are the ways that impact the average American the most. You watch what happens. You're going to see. Whoo. You're going to see people going. This is good. <laughs> That's all I got to tell you. So the cat's being let out of the bag here. And it isn't Fox News. It's it's Trump being validated yet again. And when you heard him in that clip when he said, look, I could have let this go to January, but I wasn't going to let people down. I told them I was going to get this done before Christmas and bada bing, bada boom. We got it done before Christmas. That's a big deal. Here's what Gorka had to say about 2018. Sebastian Gorka, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, relevant clip. Trust me. 
What are the Democrats going to run on? We have three and a three percent GDP growth rates already, a million and a half jobs created, the lowest unemployment in 17 years. Everybody who pays taxes is going to get a tax cut. What are they going to run on? I just don't see the message. Let's remind ourselves, Jesse, President Obama was the only president since the Depression who never reached 3% GDP growth rate for one year for his whole eight years in office. The, the 2018 is going to be incredible for the president. It's going to be incredible for all Americans. Whether you voted for him or not, you will have an incredible 2018. Welcome back, everybody. Now, look, Kevin Jackson, I can talk about the exuberance of Donald Trump. Gorka can talk about the exuberance of Donald Trump. We can talk about this all we want, but I've done a show where I said, you know, there's talk and there's action. And I'm going to tell you, to a person, go out and ask the average individual, do you prefer talk or do you prefer action? And it doesn't matter where you go up the food chain. People say, I prefer action. Action speak. That's right. Louder than words. I didn't have to finish it for you. You knew where to go. Whether you like Trump or you don't, action speaks to you. You're mad at your people. You're going, where's your action been? Let me ask you this. Have you been mad at the Republicans for for their lack of action over the past couple decades, three decades? I have. What do you think I gravitate you to Donald Trump? The fact that he says, here's what I'm going to do. I don't care if you don't think it's popular. And be aware of the guy who doesn't care about your polls. Ask yourself, well, but Trump's tied to the polls. He hates the polls. When has Donald Trump brought up a poll? He just does it. Action. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Hey everybody, welcome back. Kevin Jackson here. Do you want to sign? Do you want to sign that the times are changing, that you are now being validated as having been correct? And there are even leftists who are going, holy cow, I had no idea. You want to sign? I'm going to give it to you whether you want it or not. And let me tell you this. If we were talking about Barack Obama and this were his year one, we would be sitting, we would be crazy. Not to go, look, the, the dude was good. And he took Bush's economy. He created 1.7 million jobs. He took Bush's economy. The stock market soared. Now, you can say, oh, the stock market went up. It went up like 20 something percent during Barack Obama's time. But it had nowhere to go. I hate to tell you this, but it didn't. If Barack Obama didn't have to print a trillion dollars of new money, You could say, what an amazing thing he did to save the economy. If Barack Obama didn't beg George Bush to put a $780 billion financial aid package together to just print money and put it into the economy before he ever took office and then want to blame him for it, I would give him credit. If he had grown, it lessened unemployment in his first year by percentage points as opposed to growing it, I would give him credit. If he created more jobs, as I said, if the Donald Trump had talked, they're talking about 1.7 million versus having lost it. I would say, whoa, what a miracle worker. If he had saved companies from going offshore and told us how he was going to bring manufacturing jobs back and did it, I would go, whoa. And if he did it and said, you know what, I think I'm going to need to raise taxes in order to keep it going. 
I might even go, you know what? The dude's a genius. Let's just leave him alone. If he hadn't forced us to get health care, making people make decisions between life and, and food, <laughs> I might give him credit for it. If he had actually done what he promised and reduced our, our cost of health care and given us more choices and let us keep our doctors and our plans, I might have actually said, what a guy. But he did none of that. But here's what I want to tell you. There's not a policy you can point at that, that Barack Obama did that makes you go, man, now that was just that was amazing. His foreign policy was even worse. Now, I want to play a clip from one of Obama's minions, a guy named John Kirby. And he's actually, these are his words. I'm not even going to preface it. I'm going to just let you know, this is an Obama era guy. And he's now got this to say about President Donald Trump. You do give the president some credit for squeezing the Chinese to put pressure on North Korea. I do. I absolutely do. Him and his team, they have... Look, if you had told me a year ago, Wolf, that the Chinese would cut off all natural gas, that they would cut off importing seafood from uh, North Korea, that they would uh, put pressure on the oil exports uh, to North Korea to the degree that they have, I would have laughed at you. I didn't think that that was possible. This administration has been able to do that. Now, again, there's more work that needs to be done. I am encouraged when I hear Secretary Mattis and Secretary Tillerson talk about diplomatic efforts being in the lead and the fact that there's still maneuver space to explore diplomatic options. That makes me feel a little bit better. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. It's the Kevin Jackson Show, 844-551-8255, kjradio.com. John Kirby, Obama bot, minion. You know what he's saying? Holy cow. I was told Donald Trump is a reckless warmonger. He's going to push the button, man. Look at what this guy's going to do. And you know what Kirby's doing? Holy cow. I had, if you had told me this, I would have never believed it. Uh, I think I've kind of been saying something like that. If you had told me that Obama could do what Trump did, I would have never believed it. And I would have went, whoa. How many people do you think are experiencing this? This is a high level dude that worked for Barack Obama. And he's admitting I'm wowed. I'm floored. Folks, this is not just the minions down there voting. These are the people, the intelligentsia, the people who said you are idiots for electing Donald Trump. The people who said Donald Trump was not fit to serve. The anti-Trump movement. This is all of them combined into one luscious little snowball that's melting right in front of their faces. You're watching their snowball melt before the open fire <laughs> they're chestnut they they don't even know what to tell you that's as close to a i'm wrong and thank you america as you're gonna get china by the way he could have added we're no longer they're no longer taking north korea's coal they china's now opened up its market to our beef china's opened up its market to 183 new products some of these they're not getting from north korea the, the pressure is being put on. And you know what? I don't know. I ain't going to brag now. I ain't going to brag. But, you know, I got to tell you a little bit. I told you how Donald Trump was going to do it. I said this from the moment he was elected. When when people were talking about he's a war hawk and all that, I said the last thing Donald Trump wants to do is send people to war. He doesn't want to go. He's watched enough war films to go. I wouldn't want my son or daughter having to go through that. Now, we have a military that's ready to go. But. And, and, and for the record, I'm going to make sure they're ready. But here's what I'll tell you. We will fight with our economy before we fight with anything. I said this from day, when Trump finally got, the, when I could talk about it and say I'm for the guy at this point, because uh, I said I'd be for whoever won. I said, Donald Trump will use America's economy. You'd be a fool not to. By the way, that's what the other guy, that's what the black guy did. He didn't, he didn't use America's economy. So Trump starts saving American jobs puts out the the notice to business. You're going to take your plan offshore. I'm going to penalize you. No problem. Do what you need to do. Then people came back. He's a Nazi. He's a threat. <laughs> and now what do you got? You got an economy that's on the, I mean, it's already starting to boom, but trust me, folks, it's just that, you know, it's like, you ever seen a drag race where the tires are, they spin the tires to heat them up. And then that, that lights goes from none to red to green. And then the cars are like ready to go and they take off. That's what you have. You have an economy that's being, you know, it's just like and it's just waiting on the light. 
And let me tell you what the light's going to be. 2018. The stock market's going to soar. It's going to soar. 2018, when the, the, they get the final numbers of what happened during the Christmas season, the stock market is going to boop, boop, just mark my words. I mean, I'm no, you know, I don't, I'm not a financial guy, so I don't have to issue a statement. It's says, these statements by Kevin, oh, blah, blah, blah. But they're going to go through the roof. That's what's going to happen. See, folks, the joke is on the Democrat. Trump was considered a joke until he won the nomination. Am I right or am I wrong? Then Trump was considered unelectable. Then he messed around and got elected. (laughs) Then they told you he was incompetent, a buffoon, couldn't do anything right. And then he proved himself successful. Finally, they tell you this. They say he's impeachable until he drained the swamp and exposed the corruption behind this very government that you and members of Tea Party Community dot org go there, get signed up, have been talking about. By the way, we're sending out a letter to tell you guys all that we accomplished as members of the Tea Party. And we're looking for you guys to step up, donate, help support this cause, because 2018 and 2020, we want to put the death nail in the leftist ideology. And I'm going to be on the road doing this. Trust me. <laughs> I feel like Trump when I said, you, yeah, it's going to be big. It's going to be huge. You, you better, but it's going to be bigger than you could ever imagine. Yeah, bigger, but it is. I've written the only person folks who could save America would be a white Republican male because what America needed post Obama was they needed somebody to blame. They needed somebody willing to step up and say, you know what? You want to talk about white privilege. You want to talk about Black Lives Matter. You want to talk about police brutality. You want to talk about all these crazy things that float your boat. Fine. I'll take the problem for that. I'll take it. And only a white guy could do that because Hillary Clinton was going to use the woman card. Oh, I'm a woman. I don't know. Some other minority. Well, I'm a Hispanic or I'm this or I'm a refugee or who knows. Trump wanted the job and not for historic reasons. He actually believed he could do a better job than these other people. And I shared his view because I believe anybody and I will tell you, repeat, anybody would be a better president than Barack Obama. So the first step for Trump and being the best year one president in history was very simple. Keep your promises. He tackled trade deals, currency devaluation. He promised to send ISIS to the hitherlands and to rein in rogue regimes. And I played that clip earlier of the guy that went, I'm shocked. He promised to tackle immigration. He's doing it. He said he would undo Obamacare, mostly by letting it fail. And it was pro- it was happy to do it on its own. He then promised tax reform. Stellar record of success, revealing itself in the stock market, consumer pro- confidence, unemployment, massive GDP growth. And the left have intentionally marketed against the tax bill that has now got him soaring. But that's where we are. Russian collusion nonsense, really? First year performance for Trump has no equal. And imagine what he would have accomplished if he was unencumbered. Or better yet, what would he have accomplished if he was able to have the Democrats join him? He won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome everybody. Kevin Jackson here. It's the Kevin Jackson Show. KJRadio.com. First thing I want to do is I want to thank you for an amazing year. Truly, I'm so blessed to, you know, I, I, it's to know you. It's not to do this. This is the medium, one of the mediums in which I get to you and we get to each other. We become friends and many of you are my friends. It's funny. I look back over the past eight, almost nine years. And I think about the people who've entered my life for a variety of reasons. And we've met, we've broken bread. You've come to my town. I've had, been to yours. I've been at your homes, around your family, your friends, etc. cetera. It, it events. You've bought my books. You've spread uh, my good cheer. This radio is nothing but good cheer. <laughs> if you're a conservative, 
And you've supported us in so many ways, and I can't thank you enough. And I say this, and I hope you guys really get the feeling of what I'm telling you. This is not for me. This is for us. I'm thanking us for doing what we did. I started TeaPartyCommunity.org. Many of you joined. We got together, and we gave food to the homeless. We gave uh, bought stuff for homeless people at Goodwill and places, the things that they needed. We've continued to help kids get adopted. We've donated to sports programs. We've been active in the community. I'd like it to be a hundredfold, no, a thousandfold. And I'm going to do everything I can this year to make that happen. We've produced a movie, bleedingbluemovie.com, and I hope you go check it out. We're going to need help dis- distributing it sometime in March. And if you want to be a part of that project, let us know. But we do none of this to, to aggrand, you know, to make me bigger. I was going to use a big word. I'm just going to put it that way. This isn't about me. It's not about popularity or who does what, you know, look, if there are people out there doing better, congratulations to them. I hope they're able to spread a message far and wide. I know we do a pretty good job. I'd like to see us do better. I'm talking about my internal team, but we, you know, when we put something out there, I feel like we do our best to knock it out of the park. Every time If we hit a single or a home run, we take it the same way. And occasionally we may even strike out. We're coming back up to bat every year, year after year, We've been doing it. And this 2018, I promise you, as God is my witness, will be our best year. I believe that not because it's my plan. I believe it because I firmly believe God set me on this course. And he didn't put me out here to say, I'm going to let you fail. or I'm not going to let your message get out there. I don't know what's going to come up. Don't know, don't care. Because I, I believe that the road that's lit in front of me, I may not be able to see, you know, in the night, dark in the darkness 15 you know seconds down the road but whatever what's being lit to me shows me a path and as long as I take that path I feel like things are good and I believe we're all on that path together I truly do and so I want to thank you for being along with the journey that we share and I hope that you know you're thanking me as well for being part of your journey because this is what brought us together and be bold in your commitment to it. It's not always going to go your way. It's not always going to be something that you're you're going to be pleased with. It's not always going to deliver to you the thing that's going to make it easy. You've lost friends. You've lost family members. You've been in debates with people that you've loved and respected for years. And guess what? They're gone. So be bold in who you are. Don't worry about that. It could be a family member. Don't worry. You're okay. You have lots of family out here. We appreciate you. You show it to me. You do it all the time. So I thank you. The Democrats have a gambit going because they're so entrenched in an ideology. And my question to the Democrats and leftists would be, why are you betting against Donald Trump and the success for America. Now, they may oppose that to me and say, Kevin, why'd you bet against Obama? I didn't bet against Obama. What I told you was what was going to happen. (laughs) It's a difference. I didn't wish him any ill will, but I knew what was going to happen. Now, the same thing I could tell you with Donald Trump. I didn't wish Donald Trump necessarily more success than Barack Obama, but I knew what was going to happen. So it was easy for me to get behind a policy where he says, I'm going to cut your taxes. I'm going to give you more ability to to be in control of your money. I'm going to give you the ability to live in a safer place. I'm not going to let people encroach upon you and, and we're going to spend tax dollars on illegals and on criminals that want to come over here and blow you up. We're going to put in a trade policy and a monetary policy that benefits America. We're going to know where our money's going and why we're spending it. We're going to use our economy to fight battles and not our human beings. But if we do have to fight with our human beings, they're going to be the best prepared human beings on the planet. That's a pretty doggone good track record. And he lived up to it. And he also said this, and this was the biggest thing that he promised and what we knew. He said, I got no dog in the fight, guys. I want this country to be better. And I'm going to drain the swamp and I'm going to show you that these guys have been stealing from you. They have they've got an elitist system of government that has no accountability. And we're going to change all that. 
But why would they want to bet against a guy that now has AT&T investing a billion dollars in its employees, gave a thousand dollar bonus to each of its employees, Boeing, $300 million investment. CVS is going to hire 3,000 new workers. FedEx increased its hiring. Fifth Third Bank Corps raised its minimum wage to $15 an hour. $1,000 bonus to Wells Fargo, I mean, I mean, to its employees as well at Fifth Third Bank. Wells Fargo raised its minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour and gave up $400 million of its money to nonprofits. Why would you bet against the guy that made that happen with one piece of legislation? And then you got all the other stuff to look at. That's what you should be questioning your leftist friends over and say, why would you do this? Why would you go against somebody who's got a track record of that? Because that certainly wasn't Obama. They said it was, if this bill passes, you're going to die. Oh, okay. You won't die, but billionaires are going to take all your money. And they go, fine, okay, you're, they're giving you bonuses, but it's only for, for public relations. They just want to make, make it look like they're being magnanimous. There are people out there on the left who are mad at Donald Trump because businesses raised the minimum wage without government interference and gave money to nonprofits and to their employees. And they're mad at him. Obama pro- promised that he was going to give us 2500 bucks in medical savings, and it was celebrated by the, by the press. Republicans actually deliver $2,500 of tax relief, relief rather to us, and they vilify us. And then they wonder why we don't like them. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. Beth Cook Moranville author of Closer Than Your Breath, A Book of Hope. Hope, that wonderful, wonderful four-letter word that you may feel completely out of. I wrote this book to give you great hope. It's not too late. If fetal position is an all-too-familiar place for you, I understand. If the next 60 seconds are too long, this book is for you. Wherever you are right now, whether you're dealing with divorce or death or sickness, take hope. You are going to make it through this pain. Don't roll your eyes. I've walked this road and I know it. The best is yet to come. Closer Than Your Breath, a book of hope from author and speaker Beth Cook Moranville can be found on Amazon.com or Kindle.com. For more information, visit CloserThanYourBreath.com or on Facebook at Closer Than Your Breath. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. So the left wanted to tie DACA into the immigrant, into the um, tax bill. So the dreamers, these are kids brought over by their parents and illegally because their parents are here illegally. And then these kids come over and they say, well, you know, my kid's now here. He doesn't know anything about Mexico or El Salvador or whatever. And so we're supposed to go, oh, well, geez, you know, well, I get it. And yeah, they don't know anything about it. So you came over illegally, committed a crime, and it's all good. And we're, we're they're going to throw this into the Dream Act. And I argued on Fox and Friends. It was off air mostly with uh, 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 Harris Faulkner, who says, "Kevin, what are you going to do?" And I said, "You know, 
how do you how do you legislate this? I said, look, I feel sorry for kids that come over and don't know anything about their culture. And and between all of, I think most conservatives would say, look, we let's not just throw these kids to the wolves. But we need to have a cutoff, and we need to send some of these people back to go live with family, because that that's where they're from. There's somebody that can help out. We've already sent aid to most of these countries, so you got to deal with your own problem. But these kids got to get in line through the legal system, and you know we'll we'll figure out a way to to you know to bring them back legally, but they can't stay here. And I don't think that's unreasonable. But as I said to Harris, what's the cutoff? Because whatever the cutoff is, I guarantee you, the left will say, oh, my gosh, but look at who it doesn't it impact and look at how bad that negative rollout person after person. The 16 year old honor student who did right, but they're not going to tell you the bad stuff. And that's what I want to talk about right now. Why doesn't government. Why isn't it truthful to you about what the statistics really are? If there's anything that I hope Donald Trump continues to do is that. He takes these statistics that these guys throw out willy nilly and he says, I'm going to give you the real statistics on Muslim rape culture. I'm going to give you the real statistics on black on black crime or black crime in general. I'm going to give you the real statistics of, you know, women abuse in America, whatever. I don't care what it is. Give us the real thing and and we can figure it out. But they won't do it. I've told you guys, I'll say it to to my dying breath. There are things that the government doesn't want to tell you, but it's never good when they, like, I'll use the statistics of race. They don't want to tell you about race when it doesn't benefit them. If you knew that black people were taking advantage of some piece of legislation disproportionately, the government's never going to let you know that because their narrative is, Blacks are depressed. Like, let's say affirmative action is just completely paid for itself 10 times over. And blacks have squandered it, which they have. So would the government come out and go, well, look, affirmative action has now been in 10x. We've done the studies and it's well past its usefulness, whatever. They'd never tell you that. Now, tell you what they will tell you. They'll fudge the stats and tell you white people get over over this or that. I say that as a black man who knows that the government will sell its soul to make white people look like they're evil or whatever. And I would venture to tell you, if you ask the average black kid, Hey, who's the dominant race in the world? You know, who's got the most people they will tell you white people and white people are nowhere near the dominant people. 1.5 billion Chinese alone. We're not even talking about Japanese and South and North Koreans, which, you know, Koreans, let's just say Koreans, uh, Filipinos and, and, uh, you know, other forms of Asia. If, if you just looked at Asians, they're a huge population. Look at the number of Muslims. Look at the number of Africans. And then go look at the number of white folks and, and it'll blow your mind. White people aren't even close to being the largest population in the world. But you think it. So we've got them lying to us. And one of the biggest lies is this lie over immigrants being solid citizens. And here's the thing. If leftists fought as hard for veterans as they did for illegals, veterans would have homes. They would have jobs. They would be uh, valued members of society across the board, and we wouldn't have 22 suicides a day or whatever the number is. But they don't care. If they cared half as much about truly educating young black kids as they do about allowing illegals to come in for votes, black kids would be educated. You wouldn't need affirmative action to get them into colleges and things like that. But they don't care. But I want to give you these statistics. This was on Tucker Carlson. This will interest you. This evening, we've got brand new numbers, striking numbers that have never been seen before, and they may reshape how you think about illegal immigration. So you've heard the same line a million times. It's repeated like a mantra by the left during every debate on the subject. All immigrants are hardworking and law abiding. They do jobs you wouldn't consider doing and they do them cheerfully. They sacrifice for their families in ways you probably don't. In fact, and this is always the last point, it's always delivered with the confident satisfaction of someone shutting down a debate with superior data. Undocumented immigrants actually commit fewer crimes on average than native born Americans. 
not only are immigrants more virtuous than you are, but they're safer to be around. In other words, stop complaining. They're your superiors. But wait, are we sure that that is true? Are people who are in this country precisely because they were willing to break our immigration laws really less likely to break other kinds of laws? It doesn't make a lot of sense. Yet until today, strangely enough, no one could say for sure whether it was true because reliable statistics didn't seem to exist. Our government tracks pretty much every trend and every phenomenon you can think of, from how many pounds of pistachio nuts are recalled every year to how many fifth graders are injured on swing sets to how many people die in bathtubs. This is a nation of record keepers. We're overseen by an army of spreadsheet-wielding bureaucrats. Numbers control our lives, except on this subject. Somehow, the government went for years without honestly trying to track the volume of crime committed by illegal immigrants in this country. Maybe they were too incompetent to do it. More likely, they didn't want you to know the answer or to think about it even. In any case, we now for the first time have the actual numbers, and here they are. According to statistics from the U.S. Sentencing Commission, non-citizens are actually far more likely to commit serious crimes than Americans are. Non-citizens account for 22 percent, more than a fifth, of all federal murder convictions, 18 percent of fraud convictions, 33 percent of money laundering convictions, 29 percent of drug trafficking convictions, and 72 percent of convictions for drug possession. Meanwhile, the non-citizen percentage of the American population, about 7 percent. So that is a massively disproportionate amount of crime, not even close. No, immigrants are not more law-abiding and less dangerous than Americans. That's totally untrue. Indeed, it's the opposite of the truth. Non-citizens are more likely to be arrested, convicted, and imprisoned for serious crimes than people who were born here. Much more likely. So why didn't we know this until now? Why have so many people been lying to us about this for so long? That's a question we plan to ask a whole bunch of people. All right, everybody, welcome back. So those are the real numbers. The illegals are far more likely to commit crimes, and I'm talking violent crimes, even more so than black teens. Why doesn't the left want you to know this? Why do they hide these statistics? You know the answer. Ask them. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson is the Kevin Jackson Show. KJRadio.com. Glad you're with me. I want to play. Uh, you know, I, when you're in the radio business, when you're in showbiz, <laughs> as I am. <laughs> yeah, when you're in showbiz, people call you all the time, adoring fans. And they just want to tell you about yourself. They want to, they compliment you on so many things. Kevin, I love the way your voice sounds when you're speaking like the way you are right now on radio. <laughs> Gives them tingles up their legs. And, and the host of other things that, that happen. But my producers will tell you, we get plenty of mail. We get play. That's what we called it back in the day. Like if a dude could go out to a club and, you know, pick up women, they say, man, shoot, he, that dude, he gets play. You know, people want to get in the game. <laughs> so <laughs> I get some play. In this particular case, it wasn't, you know, it was male that called me. And yes, I know, you know, when, when you're as good looking and as smart as I am and, you know, got the face for radio, then people want to get, want to get in contact with, with you. <laughs> so this guy, he calls me up because I'd been on Outnumbered a week or so ago and he saw me on there and he says, I promoted an FBI conspiracy theory that Donald Trump, that the FBI could potentially assassinate Donald Trump. And it wasn't what I said, you know, and I, I think I told you guys when we did one show that what I was trying to say is if you have the texts that are so, uh, you know, you, you when a guy says something like, we got to get rid of him at all costs, we can't let him happen, we can't let it happen. And I said, well, that runs a spectrum of, it was harmless banter among two FBI agents, which is what the left wants to promote, all the way to, well, maybe we'll take him out. And so Harris, you know, interrupts and says, Kevin, you certainly aren't saying that. I'm like, I'm not saying anything. I'm telling you what the text could be interpreted as and what they're going to be a range of people interpreting that as. And of course, the leftist clowns had me. I was on Jake Tapper 
and all, a bunch of other people. They wanted to paint me as a conspiracy theorist and all that. Fine. I don't care. You know, it, the left always feels like they, ooh, if we, if we put enough pressure on Kevin, it's going to break his back. Mm-mm. You, you guys don't understand. You know, I'm Atlas. <laughs> I'm holding up the world. You're not going to break my back. But uh, anyway, one of my fans decided to call and I want to dissect his call and, and explain. It, what's funny, he says he's a Republican. He's a lifelong Republican and he wants to tell me, you know, the error of my ways and what I said, blah, blah, blah. So here's that call. Yeah, I'm a Republican calling from Ohio. I see on the Internet where you come up with some conspiracy with the FBI against Donald Trump to get rid of Donald Trump. Where is your brain at? What kind of bull people you got on Fox News that are trying to propaganda bull it's just as bad as the people that are trying to look into Donald Trump from Russia and everything else. You think there's collusion, that they're against Donald Trump. No, they want to get to the bottom facts of everything, you dumb <laughs> You better get your head out of your <laughs> Kevin Jackson. You, you, you're somewhere in a twilight. I've been a Republican 30 years. And I, you, your ideas are stupid. I mean, Donald Trump's going to be impeached or thrown out one way or the other anyhow. If they if Republicans don't impeach him by spring, the American people are going to force him to resign or leave this. Because he's too stupid and dumb like a lot of you people at Fox News that say anything just to get something going. Donald Trump's no good for America, no good for the world. And it's going to lead right to the top with Flynn, Manafort, Banner, all this bullshit. His son, son in law Donald Trump will be gone early spring, early summer. One way or the other, he won't be around at the end of 218. They can put Mike Pence in or the Speaker of the House. Donald Trump's going to leave on his own or he's going to be forced to resign. Now, as far as your bullshit. Saying that the FBI or CIA got something against Donald Trump and they want to do away with him. Where in the hell do you guys come up with these conspiracies? You better get your head out of your and wake up. Because what's going to happen once we get this country back from this idiot that's running it right now and everybody on Fox News and some of these idiots I can't even and Rush Limbo and them and then you too with these accusations, then we're coming after you guys and get rid of you clowns on Fox News. All right, so he didn't leave his name, so we'll just call him Princess. Um, so he claims he's a 30 year Republican. You guys buy it. I don't buy it. I don't believe a 30 year Republican is going to look at Donald Trump through these eyes, through the eyes of the typical Republican and say what he said. So see, this is a, this is a hint. Whenever somebody comes on and they go at with it, with that kind of a tirade and they're like, I'm a 30 year Republican. What he's telling you is he's a 30 year Democrat. And it's really funny. I already covered the conspiracy piece because, like I said, if you have this cryptic text that says, I want to get rid of Kevin Jackson at all cost. And you text that. I think to myself, well, he's either just a nutcase like this particular caller, Princess, and he's just, you know, blowing steam or he'll want he wants to get rid of me at all cost. Now, if that makes you a conspiracy theorist, then Princess, I guess I'm a conspiracy theorist because I look at the full range of what somebody is could imply. I didn't say that the FBI did it. And uh, I, and just so you guys are aware, you know, Fox called me afterwards. Oh, Kevin, there's a firestorm on Twitter about this. And I went, so what do you want me to do about it? I said exactly what I believe you, that you have to look at the range of things that were said that that could possibly mean. There are some people that are going to look at it as harmless on the left. There are going to be some conspiracy theorists that will look at it as wh- who knows on the right. And then there's going to be a bunch of people in between. And so this clown who called me a clown asked, asked, where's my brain at? I just explained where my brain's at. There's no propaganda. And then he goes on to say, I'm just as bad as the people looking into what Donald Trump's done with Russia. Well, as I said on the show, Princess, I said, look into Russia. I hope they continue looking into Russia. The deeper that these morons on the left look into Russia, what do they find? Nothing on Trump and a ton of stuff on Hillary Clinton, Podesta, Barack Obama, Comey, McCabe, and I could go down the list. I mean, honestly, it, I, I would lo- I would love to to get this guy to actually call during the show so I could show just how big of a monkey this guy. He doesn't have the intellect of a monkey. I apologize to monkeys. He does not have the intellect of a monkey. He goes on to say that Donald Trump. Did, I love this because all the leftists are, are ba- here's what they're banking their theories on, folks. They say Donald Trump's going to be impeached. OK, give me a reason why. Give, give me what? Because the economy's too good. <laughs> well, because there's too much unemployment. You know, there's uh, too little unemployment because businesses are moving back. The, they want him impeached for one simple reason. These butt munches 
voted for Barack Obama and Donald Trump came in and he obliterated this fool. He showcased exactly what we've been saying for the last eight years, that Barack Obama's a worse president ever. And if you were to put Hillary Clinton in and those policies were to have continued, you'd never know it. But when you put somebody competent in, it makes these guys mad. So anyway, they say he's going to get impeached. I can guarantee you this, princess, Donald Trump will not resign. I'll tell you something else. He's not going to be impeached. And here's the one that's probably going to send you into coronary. <laughs> there is nothing that is going to happen with respect to Russia, except that it backfires on the left. And what, what amazes me, honestly, what amazes me is as, as clowns like Princess watch the unraveling of the FBI, where the new FBI director, Ray, fires the head guy, the head attorney, uh, Rosen, who they believe leaked the dossier, he's one of them. They've already gotten rid of uh, Stro Stroh's or Struck or whatever his name is. And now we find ourselves with uh, J uh, McCabe under fire and he believes something's going to happen to Trump. Like I said, guys, I don't mind taking phone calls. I don't mind you guys disagreeing with me. But when you sit here and you throw expletives out and you accuse me of things that I didn't do, don't think I'm not going to respond back. But what's really funny is, as I said, I wanted to call, I called this guy over the holidays because he had left a message and I just wanted to have a conversation. I just wanted to say, look, you apparently have a beef and we can clear the air and I can explain to you what I said. And so, you know, the numbers come through on our, on our call system. And so I called him back and I said, his uh, lady answered the phone, you know, hello. And she sounded like, I mean, she sounded like a, like a leftist harlot. And she's like, hello. I mean, Eve, like answered it mean. And I said, yeah, I said there was a gentleman who called my radio show and I thought he might want to have a conversation with me. And then she said, I can hear her, she said, hey, whatever his name was, a princess, did, did you call a radio show? And I, and I heard his voice. It was the same guy. And he goes, no, uh -uh, I didn't call it a radio show. And I just I chuckled to myself because he had called the show. And, you know, this, this, he's too afraid. <laughs> he's too afraid to answer the phone and have a conversation man to man. After all the you need to pull your head out of your butt, Kevin Jackson, Kevin Jackson, this and you're blank this. And you, I mean, I called me. Yeah, I mean, just I don't know if he called me specifically, but he what he say? He was like made me. He, he did not call me a child of God. OK. And so I just want to have a general conversation. I, I feel like if you are that upset about something I said and you have this access, I mean, let me put it to you this way. Do you think that, um, I don't know, Brett Bear is going to call you up and go, hey, listen, I said something on the show. You you seem to be mad at Fox. Let's have a conversation and work it out. No, because he's too much of a pansy. See, and I'm only proving to you guys, this is what the left does. By the way, P Princess, if you want to call the show and talk to me directly, I will pat you through so you, the audience can hear this, because I'm not afraid to have a conversation with you. But you being too chicken to pick up the phone, I think is pretty telling. Anyway, we got a lot to talk about, folks. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state the secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. 
Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. While I was gone in New York doing my Fox stuff, the uh, tax bill was under consideration. It was called, it was compared to the Fugitive Slave Act. They said it was the worst law since the Fugitive Slave Act. And what was interesting to me is how badly taxes actually enslave Americans and that a Democrat would have the nerve to say that. See, you're a slave to the taxes in this country. That's government's control over you. By the way, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but there's a a guy who offered a pretty hefty reward. It's now up to three hundred thousand dollars. He says, show me in the statutes anywhere in the IRS code where you're required to pay taxes. You can pay you know, uh, taxes like on, uh, what do they call it? You know, excise taxes and Congress can set those types of taxes. Uh, your, uh, what am I trying to say? Retail tax, but there's nothing that should tax your wage. Your wage is what you go out and you earn. And then you, the other mechanisms for the people to generate money for the comp- the government to generate money is through, okay, you're, you buy something, you get taxed. And there's nobody's and, and there was a guy who fights this every year. He's an advocate for not paying for paying taxes, but not being hustled out of your money the way they do it. And he's won two cases. Now, he's an attorney. He knows the law through and through and he wins every case. I, you know, we we just don't have the guts to do it. But the fact of the matter is, is just ask yourself a very simple question. You get a piece of land and you were in the frontier of America and you farm that land. And I came in and I went, you know, I know you put a lot of effort into this, but I'm taking half your crop. You'd probably kill me. That's what would have happened in the old West. Somebody would have said, fool, who do you think you are? You better get out of here. You're not taking half my crop. What'd you do? Did you plant seed? Did you harvest it? What did you do? I'm not doing anything. I'm just here to get my cut. You'd get killed. But the government does it. And then what's funny when I hear leftists argue, well, they're giving all the tax cuts to the rich or tax cuts are going to the corporations. And I go, who do you think is creating the wealth? Who do you think's done something? Has government done it? No, well, government. Do, do, do. Yeah, I went through this early in the broadcast. It bores me to talk about it, to be honest with you, because it makes no sense. I'm going to go out. OK, so let's just think about what happened. I don't know what you may do for a living, but let's say you have a concept and you go, boy, you know what? I'm a good accountant. I don't want to work for some accounting firm. I'm going to go out and I'm going to find my own business. I'm going to tell people I'll do your taxes. I'll do your accounting and I will advertise and I'm going to do all this stuff. So you build your website money. You, well, first of all, you get your degree money. You build your website money. You then have to go out and find clients. So maybe you hire somebody to do it or you go out and use, you're up at night trying to figure out how to bring people to your website. I'm the best accountant ever, man. Come be with me. I'll get you more money back, whatever. So you're doing your thing. And then it, let's say in seven years, your business is thriving. You're, you, you know, you got a base of a, you're making a million bucks a year, something like that. And government just every, every year goes, Hey, God, I need my 450,000 or my 500 grand. And you go, what did you do? Well, uh, if I'm Al Gore and I built the internet for you. What, what did they do? They've done nothing. Now don't misunderstand me. I understand we have to have rules and things like that and we got to pay bills, but show me what they did. They talk about roads and bridges. I don't even need to go to over your roads and bridges to do something on the internet. Let's say I have a thriving business and I use, you know, eBay and I ship products that go from one. I don't even do anything. I just say, I know where I can get these products. I'll go out and buy things for you. I'll be a, a, a planner that buys you things. I'm buying on eBay. I ship it out. And I make 200 grand a year and the government goes, I want $100,000. I want, you know, 50 grand, whatever it is for doing what you didn't come up with a concept. You do none of the work. I I talk about it went from a a guy who's a, you know, takes a cotton seed, puts it in the ground, grows it, harvests his cotton, sells it to a mill mill, then sells it, you know, mills it up based on Levi's or somebody wanting it for blue jeans. They sell it at wholesale to Levi's mill the product for him and Levi's goes and manufactures it and sells it and, you know, well, sends it off to a retailer like Nordstrom's who sells it, not Nordstrom's, they wouldn't sell Levi's, but you get what I'm saying. And all the way through the the whole chain of it, the government makes money from the person who sold you the seed 
to the water that went into the ground, to your harvesting it and all the equipment you use to do that, to you selling it to a mill, to the mill selling it to a retailer, to the retailer selling it. The government's got its finger and every piece of it for roughly the same amount of profit and it can't pay its bills. I want you to imagine you somebody sells a guy seed or a 500 pound sack of seed and you get a, a $10 or $20 check every time that seed gets sold. Then the guy harvests it and he goes out and does all the work. Every piece of equipment he buys, you get your cut. Okay, so you're going to he buys a, a combine that's worth, you know, $100,000. You get a cut. I don't know what percentage, but you get a cut. Then he harvests it and he sells it. And let's say he sells his crop for, you know, $250,000. You get a cut. Then the $250,000 of whole, of, of product that was sold in raw materials is now made into $5 million worth of stuff. And it gets sold wholesale for $5 million bucks, And you get a cut. And then the retailer sells it for $15 million bucks. And you get a cut and you don't have to do anything. Where can I sign up for this? Because I would love to. And to influence people not to do this, Rosie O'Donnell actually offered two million dollars in an attempt to bribe Republican senators the night before the, uh, the vote. It was being debated in the Senate, and she said she'd give two million dollars to any GOP senator who votes no on the bill. And of course, no Republican took her up on it. 51 votes in favor, 48 votes against, and we got our tax bill. But Rosie was willing to bribe people to vote against the president's bill, knowing, by the way, it's illegal to do this. I don't know if she knew it, but it is illegal to do it. And it certainly would be illegal for people to take it. But that's the kind of system that Rosie O'Donnell believes we have. And is she thinking about it, that the taxes, high taxes are enslaving Americans? Of course not. By the way, Rosie, you can still give that $2 million away. You can give it back to the treasury. You can give it to poor people. Give it to charity. If you're going to be so magnanimous, give the money to somebody who really needs it. I love these sanctimonious leftists. We need to keep taxes high. I tell you what, you the minute, the minute that any of them gives away their fortune and only keeps what the average American makes. If, if Rosie said to me, I'm going to take, take the average of $73,000 of income, if that's the number, and I'm going to live on that for the next 10 years, I'm giving away the rest of my fortune, but I'm going to put enough in escrow for me to live on $73,000 for the rest of, for the next 10 years. I tell her, you know what? You put your money where your mouth is. Have you heard of any of them doing that? These guys have fortunes. Jody Foster came out the other day. She's worth over a hundred million dollars is what I read. And she talked about the tax bill, how it was going to hurt the poor. I tell you what, Jody, it would ring a more true. It would ring a more true. Did you ever say that? It would ring more, but it would, it would ring more true. If Jody Foster gave away, I don't know, 50 million of that hundred million. 70 million. How many millions does Jody need to feel comfortable going into the waning years of her life? I don't know. I I read a study that said anything over $70,000 and you're no happier. So let's see these people do it. And here's the thing. They're never going to do it. You know it. I know it. They know it. And we don't even take advantage. I would be running billboards and say, y'all, you suckers that want to lament the tax bill. When you start giving away your money, maybe you'll have more credibility. And I'm not talking about giving it away to charity and then writing it off because that would be in violation of the taxes, tax code. Why would we let you do that? They won't do it. And you know why they won't do it. And here we've got Donald Trump. Rock star. He's proving to these people he knows what he's doing. Barack Obama said he couldn't get the three, 3% GDP. He did it two times in a row. You want to know what the projections are right now? We've talked about it. The, the Fed is projecting 
the regional central bank's now cast model says Donald Trump's going to go to 3.92% GDP calculated for this coming quarter. And let me tell you what they're going to do. They're going to revise it upwards and it's going to be at four. And then next quarter, this one after Christmas, post Christmas, this quarter is going to be at five. won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.